Professor Caravit here to talk to you about the Kingdom Fungi, because I am a fun guy. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so, uh, the Kingdom Fungi, what is a fungus? Well, people used to think they were plants. You know, they look at mushrooms or mold on a piece of bread, and they kind of sit there, they don't move around, they thought they were plants. But they're not plants. In fact, they're more closely related to you than they are to a tree, for example if we look at a cladogram. So fungi are heterotrophs. So they do not photosynthesize. They absorb the nutrients from outside of their body. So they don't ingest food. They digest it outside of their bodies and then they absorb it. Um, they have a specific shape that enhances their ability to do this. And guess what? It involves a massive amount of surface area. Their bodies are shaped like spaghetti noodle, branching spaghetti noodles. <laughs> massive amounts of surface area. And these long strands are called hyphae. So fungi, even a mushroom, although it, you have to zoom in to see it, consists of branched hyphae. So these are chains of cells that make these long strands. These are uh, long filaments adapted for absorption. They're, you know, just like we have villi and microvilli or villi, you know, these finger-like projections, we have a similar idea here in the fungi. Their body shape uh, promotes absorption of nutrients. Now, um, they're not closely related to plants, but they do play a huge role in the colonization of land by plants. So fungi live on land, of course. Uh, they also help plants to live on land by increasing the surface area of their roots. Those hyphae, those strands of cells, live um, on or in plant roots, roots helping them to absorb nutrients, uh, mostly you know water and minerals. And then the plant gives the fungi uh, sugars from photosynthesis. So this, we can see this even in the, uh, some of the earliest land plant fossils that we find. We can find fungi in the roots of early land plants, which is pretty amazing. So just to remind you, this is called mycorrhizal association. So mycorrhizae, myco means fungus and rhizae means roots. So these are associations of fungi with roots. And they can actually, in some cases, go into the plant roots. Now, they're not eating the plant roots. They're just receiving sugars from those roots. And they provide water and, and minerals and things to the plants to help them to, uh, to survive. So fungi feed via absorption rather than ingestion. Uh, they release hydrolytic enzymes into their environment. So if you have a piece of bread that's moldy, if you zoomed in on it, you would see tons of little branched hyphae all over that bread. And what's happening is those hyphae uh, release um, chemicals, uh, these enzymes into the environment. I was trying to change the color of my pen here, but it doesn't want to let me for some reason. Okay, whatever. So it'll release enzymes out here into the environment, break down the bread into macromolecules, and then absorb those macromolecules. Okay. Uh, the fungi also, a uh, thing that makes it unique is they have cell walls, just like uh, bacteria do, just like plants do, but their cell walls are uh, made of chitin, and this prevents them from bursting in hypotonic environments. Uh, chitin, if you recall, is also, or, or, well, we'll talk about it more later, is found in the exoskeleton, not cell walls, but exoskeleton of arthropods like insects. Um, their cells, like I said, form long chains called hyphae. So hyphae, if you zoom in on it, are made up of lots of fungal cells linked together. And hyphae are interwoven into a mass so each strand is a hyphae, but this big old mass of hyphae is called a mycelium. Mycelium is the name of the body of a fungus. Lots of surface area to volume ratio there. And there are some fungi, especially yeast, like we use in lab, which is a single celled organism. So not all fungi do the hyphae thing, but a lot of them do, most of them do. So if we look at a mushroom, a mushroom is just the reproductive part of a fungus, but it's the, and, and not all fungi make mushrooms, let's be clear on that, just specific kinds of fungi. Fungi is a very diverse group. We're not going to go into it all, but we're all familiar with mushrooms, and if I had a show of hands, how many of you love mushrooms and how many of you hate mushrooms, I'd imagine that there'd be about three quarters of you that might like them, and a, a, a good chunk of the class that will not eat them. Uh, it's kind of interesting to talk about that too, but 
Here we see uh, that underground, there's a lot of the mycelium here, this, all these hyphae, lots of surface area. They're breaking down material, organic material in the soil. One of the major roles of fun fungus in the environment is to break down and decompose organic matter like this wood here. Then when they reproduce, uh, at least the kind that make mushrooms, will form these structures that produce spores that will fall on the ground and grow into more hyphae. And once again, I just want to point out, I love this diagram from your book. It shows you this concept we've been talking about over and over again, the importance of surface area to volume. We see lots of surface area in our thylakoid membranes, these folded membranes. We see it in the shapes of flatworms. Uh, so we have folding and flattening to increase surface area. We have projections to increase surface area, like the villi. We have branching to increase surface area, like we see in the... Uh, the the uh, the hyphae of fungus it's a, an idea that comes up all over the place within biology why because structure and function are intimately linked that's a key concept of biology all right so let's talk about the fungus life cycle real quick so <clears throat> fungus life cycle is a little weird uh but here's here's how it works first of all sometimes they reproduce asexually where the fungus will just make spores and they'll grow into more another mycelium, another big ball of hyphae, okay, asexually. But uh, the bulk of the fungus life cycle is haploid. Everything that you see in blue is haploid here. Um, so the, the spores fall on the ground, they grow into a mycelium, they digest food and stuff. Now let's say they're going to reproduce. Well, if they're going to reproduce sexually, they first undergo plasogamy. Plasogamy is when there's one strand of hyphae here from one fungus, and then maybe there's another strand over here from another fungus, and they meet up, okay? And some of their cells will fuse together. They don't have sperm or egg. Fungus don't do sperm or egg. Instead, parts of their mycelium fuse together. Their cytoplasm fuses, and that's called plasogamy, okay? Then you have this heterokaryotic stage in this area right here. Heterokaryotic stage means you have cells that have a nucleus from one of these strands of hyphae, and you have a nucleus from another strand. So this is said to be N plus N. So there's two haploid nuclei inside of that cell. Then we have karyogamy. That's when those nuclei fuse together, and now we have a diploid cell which quickly undergoes meiosis to make spores. And those fall on the ground to grow into another mycelium. Meanwhile, asexually, you have a haploid cell that produces spores by mitosis, and they grow into basically clones uh, of the parent plant uh, in the case of asexual reproduction. Okay, so that is uh, all I'm going to talk about when it comes to fungus. But remember, there's a lot of di diversity in fungi from yeast to mushrooms to bread molds. Uh, penicillin is made from uh, fungi. Lots of our medicine comes from fungi. And before I go into plants, I want to mention, or, or other plants, I want to mention why um, fungi and plants are used for 50% of our medicines. It's because they are rooted in place or they sit in one spot. Even though they're not related, closely related, plants and fungi both are stationary organisms. They can't run away, so they've evolved lots of chemicals to defend themselves or to attract pollinators or, or what have you, or to get their seeds dispersed, you know, that sort of thing. Because of that, they have lots of different chemicals they've evolved, chemicals that we use for our medicines. And that's everything from morphine to THC and marijuana to caffeine to penicillin. All of these different things, many of our cancer drugs, all produced by plants and fungi. It's pretty amazing.